Hey, it is your buddy, Peace and Harmony, with you here today. Much love going out to all the beautiful Empowered Harmonizers. We're zooming in and focusing in a little bit more in depth on how to manage a relationship with a borderline individual, someone who perhaps has tendencies of a borderline personality disorder, someone who really has a lot of what we'd call mood lability, meaning moods that can be unstable, unpredictable, intense, extreme, one-sided, extremely opinionated. Just it's an end-all, be-all, and it seems to present a lot of tension and resistance. It makes it very difficult to have a two-way conversation, very difficult to have a sense of relationship. These individuals, because they have a sort of moving target or a fragile sense of their self image. It creates this sort of cycle where they have a fear of abandonment, sort of a fear of their connections being frayed, being dissolved, being cut, you know, things that are just going to be unsafe feeling for them. And they don't have a sense of their own strength stability, security, being anchored, being able to know that they can have a routine and then sort of keep along the middle. Um, there is, uh, it's very oftentimes difficult for them to have a sense of neutrality, meaning there's a feeling of judgment or extreme viewpoints that they're, you know, really, you know, high, high energy on specific topics. Um, this can be an advantage for people. It can also be a disadvantage. However, largely when we talk about getting into a relationship, these individuals oftentimes experience a sense of attachment disorder, meaning they have difficulty connecting with others, having relationships that are able to keep step and pace with each other. There's a feeling of disconnect and oftentimes a feel that you have done them wrong or you're not seeing things right or you are the problem now. Um, feeling like you are the problem oftentimes is a result really of their fear of abandonment. They will keep others close at hand and sort of keep a tight knit through this high energy, oftentimes being what I would call catastrophizing, always catastrophizing the situation. What is the worst that can happen? You know, focused on the negative. OMG, this is going to happen. Um, you know, the pipes are going to break. We're going to be homeless. Um, you know, uh, the dinner is ruined. My flowers, this. I mean, everything is up for being um, dismayed. And so they have a feeling of perhaps coming apart and they feel that others aren't supportive of them. And so they'll have this feeling or tendency to be hypercritical, what comes off as very judgmental or unloving of others. Um, it can be very cold. It doesn't have a sense of sort of a nurtured emotion or being cultured in a specific way. It can seem just sort of all over the map, if you will, um, lacking, um, you know, lacking sort of a security or a center, an anchor within. It does not feel right to them to be anchored within. They have a feeling of emptiness or boredom or that they're missing something. Um, I think these individuals have a feeling that they are, you know, going to miss out on something or miss connecting with others that they just have extreme viewpoints and extreme emotions and extreme energy, meaning either, you know, highly aroused and up or deflated, so highly inflated viewpoints or highly deflated. And um, it's, you know, every every person has a spectrum of emotions. They need downtime. They need cool down time. They need party time. They need work time. They need time to just eat, to just be, to do, but largely overall to become. It's a sense of self. This is known as your identity, your self image, how you feel about yourself, what you value, what you cherish, knowing who you are. And the borderline individuals really struggle with this. And so as you can imagine, it's very difficult to have a relationship with someone 
who's kind of, you know, all over uh, the place. And there's a feeling and tendency to want to help, to anchor, to rescue, to stabilize, to heal, to resolve, to put them together, put them back together again, the Humpty Dumpty, you know, fell off the wall, let me put you back together again. There's a feeling of wanting to help them get it together. Um, it seems like you feel for them, especially if you're a person of empathy. You know, why are you running yourself ragged? Why are you um, doing all this? Why are you putting yourself through all this? You know, I want, you know, allow me, I will do the vacuuming, I'll do the this, I'll do the that. So there's a feeling and a tendency while you're around someone who's borderline to try to help them out, keep their life together because especially if it's someone close like a family member or a spouse, there's a feeling or tendency that, you know, a happy wife is a happy life. Um, and so in other words, if they're happy, then finally your environment is happy. They have this sort of demandingness about them. Um, and oftentimes people feel and absorb that they feel it has something to do with them. This person is so agitated, I must not be helping enough. This person is so irate, I must get the thorn out that they're so irate about. There's this feeling of responsibility and accountability that comes for them. I must be uh, there to put them together. <clears throat> I must be there to make sure that, um, you know, that they have a stable uh, meal or a stable house or that their life is together. So wanting to kind of keep them together because they're sort of erratic. Um, this can be a very difficult feeling, but it is a natural feeling. Um, <clears throat> but it's, it's wrought oftentimes with a lot of struggle. And then because of def feeling defeated or really ineffective or feeling unvalidated, unappreciated, and more so unseen by this individual, that is the problem. You know, it's just that you feel as if they're not perceiving you with their senses. They're not getting you. They're not listening. Um, they're, you know, kind of on their own um, diatribe. Um, they're on, you know, that's who they are. Um, so to manage um, this feeling oftentimes of disconnect that you see with the borderline is because there is really sort of a moving sense of center. A, a, a fragile sense of self. They have kind of an eroded <coughs> <coughs> excuse me. They have an eroded sort of or moving sense of self, a fragile sense of their self image, meaning, you know, they never quite feel like they get their profession right. They never feel like they're all a nurse. They don't feel like they're all a doctor. They don't feel that they're all a teacher. They're missing something. And they have this sort of um, nagging sense of emptiness that they're not, you know, it's not enough. The, it's just the bottom doesn't ever stop. You know, there is no bottom. Um, and oftentimes there is no top. Um, and a lot of people who kind of feel for their suffering, you know, want them to be into a state of middle, a state of center, a state of neutrality, where they can basically feel that you have, arrived and you can just be it is okay to exist it's people who are surrounding borderline feel like you have to give them permission you know it's okay you know you can just relax um to try to get them on a wavelength with you so to manage a, a relationship um rather than feeling that you have to rescue or put together a borderline it's important to understand that this is just kind of who they are this is the components and ingredients of a person that you are dealing with and oftentimes rather than strengthening your own viewpoint with them in other words getting them to see the light see what you're talking about you know I mean it can be as much as I want to do this for my birthday well actually I think it would be better if we did this even though it's your birthday you should be doing your thing they have other ideas for you um, I think I should be doing this for my job. This is what I what I want I want to do. You know, they have other ideas for you. They don't oftentimes validate who you are. People feel invisible around them. People feel ineffective. They feel non-existent. And it's it's my feeling that you're kind of picking up on their emptiness that they experience on the day to day, that you are then wanting to work out 
their issues for them, which you can't do. You know, you, you can't work out their issues. There's a tendency in social relationships, family relationships, work relationships, if you're working with these types of individuals, to want to help them make amends, to see that everything is okay, um, to have a connection, you know, a, you know, what you might call a bond, um, a, you know, a relationship that has a sense of knowing, certainty. But however, it's very difficult to have a relationship with someone who has a sense of certainty if really sort of the bottom has a bottom which has a bottom and a top and a side and it also has a door but no window and then an alleyway and then it kind of an so it's just sort of there's sort of this feeling of sort of not knowing the shape or the blueprint or sticking to it um and so like as you might say oh i know that person um you know they like to cook this they like these kind of people this is their job this is their car this is their house this is their children and this is the composite, this is the person, it's kind of difficult to get that sort of feeling of knowingness with someone who is borderline um, because they're kind of very fearful of really of being abandoned, that they, you know, really um, are intense, very intense about their viewpoint and then what others should think, feel, or do that they can't see others for who they are. It's just it's just considered like a system limitation, but a lot of people take this as um, a fault of their own. I can't connect with them. I just want to have this um, love. I want to have you know us to you know it doesn't have to be singing through the tulips, but at least to get along, to enjoy each other's company, get to know each other, be there for moral support, share you know a communion, especially if it's with a family to have a family bond, a, a sense of reliability, certainty, comfort, laughing, um, sharing poignant moments, particularly that of nostalgia. You know, when, um, you know, because these are individuals as your family are going to be some of the most significant influential individuals that you'll ever have in your life because oftentimes your future relationships will mimic or mirror that, that, dynamic, particularly the role that you are in there. And, and so to really how to get along with someone and how to connect um, is important to kind of look at and evaluate for yourself, particularly when um, we talk about sort of having your feelings, which oftentimes you can't always have your feelings or your thoughts in the presence of someone who is borderline. It's very strange because their energy can be so erratic and so intense that it tends to engulf others. Um, it tends to seem sort of manipulative. They break others down. Um, and they, it seems to shut others out. Like you feel that you're not heard, you're not listened to, your uh, things are not reciprocated. And um, yet, you know, you're, you're, you're wondering, you know, they, they are, are fully human, but it feels like, you know, there's always missing the target. There's something that is not right. And so it creates this tension. Um, and this, this tension is within them. Um, this tension is part of a, a borderline. Um, they, they don't have a real strong or kind of um, stable sense of self. In other words, it, it changes, it varies. They, you know, they're too religious or not religious enough in their own viewpoint. They're opinionated, but not opinionated enough or not doing enough. Um, they're good at their job, but they're not good enough. They're a good this, but they're not good enough. They, they don't really have a sense of themselves and sort of that, you know, little gear within that gives you a sense of security and knowing what you are interested in and things of that nature. So they, they don't oftentimes share that validation with others, it's it's a disconnect, um, but yet they're present. So it's, and oftentimes these individuals, because of this instability and their fear of abandonment, they'll really hold on to certain feelings very intensely. They do not let it go. It could have, it's just how they feel. They're just, they cling on to it for their dear life because it's just, it gives them a sense of being together 
And even though they might seem shattered in a bunch of pieces, people usually want to glue them back together and try to communicate everything is going to be all right. You will be taken care of. You'll be provided for. I'm here for you. I'm stable. You know, and you can extol all your own virtues, but oftentimes it feels like it just is in one door and out the other. Um, and so to get a sense of connection, you have to realize that there is going to be a feeling of disconnect. It ain't going to feel like, you know, your fuzzy socks. It ain't going to feel like, you know, your, 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 you know, the, the pieces are snapping into place. It's probably, it's going to feel different than other relationships. Um, and oftentimes people think that, you know, um, this is an inferior relationship. Um, they try to, you know, assign interpretations to it. Um, they're, they're wrong. They're unhealthy. Um, they're mean, rude, all these different things, which very much could be true and largely is true because they're insensitive to others. They don't feel that they're doing anything wrong though. So that's why it's, it's not something that they can correct or be corrected. Um, they will, you know, point the direction and then, you know, be looking over here. So they're very difficult to follow. Um, and so really you have to kind of get outside of yourself and sort of be the bigger person and focus on their feelings only validating their situation oftentimes which feels like a loss for the individual who has to do this um it seems like you're very worried about the flower garden you know you're um needing to attend to that now in the middle of the dinner um you know wow you know and then just sort of you know validating their feelings is a way, you know, getting kind of altruistic, setting your own feelings aside. And even though I feel this, I am this, I'm all about this. This is me. Oftentimes you're going to feel that they don't get you. And a lot of people also feel like the sad part is that a lot of people in a relationship with a borderline feel like this individual never really got to know me. They never really got to know who I am. They never got to know what a precious relationship we have. They never got to take advantage. They never got a chance to share. They never got a, a chance to be and have the good stuff, the fun, the sharing, the closeness. You know, I'll, I'll be there to drive you to the hospital. Um, I'll be there to make you some chicken soup. I'll be there to make your bed, you know. The, the close things that family members have or with work partners, you know, that, that connection of sharing discussion on things at work, um, whatever it might be, oftentimes the, the sad part is that people who are in a relationship with them feel that this individual never has a chance to really know who they are. And especially because the individual who is perhaps not the borderline and is seeing things kind of clearly or is trying to, um, they feel that they, um, the, the individual never sees the good that they have been able to share or give or provide to this person. So their good deeds go unseen. Their good deeds go unacknowledged, unvalidated, unappreciated. It's just as if you did nothing. It feels meaningless, valueless. They just, it does not stick. It doesn't stick to the wall. Throw it to the wall, it's not going to stick. That is how it is with these individuals. There is no sort of reception area in the individual for this to be validated. They're not, you're not going to hear the words. You're not going to have the feeling, wow, you've done a great job. Remember when you did that, you saved me there. Um, remember when we did that, that was amazing. You're not going to get that shared positive experience. You're not going to get that shared positive feeling of acknowledgement and validation, which is common, you know, and is part of normalcy. Being able to share a common experience. What a great movie. What a great meal. What a great hike. Um, things always seem to be kind of always wrong. There's always something wrong. Um, and it's very difficult uh, to feel that you... You know, especially, and I know a lot of mem uh, viewers, um, you know, are saying with the holidays, it, we're going to be talking about that, but where, you know, you should be having traditions, um, things where, you know, you're building memories, you're, this is, you know, it, this is where, this is our celebration, this is, 
you know, our family. It's, this is our, you know, our inner circle. So being able to have that have, you know, it's like the haves or have nots. You feel like people oftentimes feel like they're in the have not perspective. Um, so in order to remedy this, um, really understand that what you're feeling is not because you're um, not good, um, intelligent, um, saying things correctly, um, etc. You know, these people are all full of surprises. And one of the surprises is that they just, you know, they're kind of caught up in this, their own instability. And so to have a connection is to kind of put your own feelings aside and just kind of validate you know, their experience so you can have a degree of, you know, connection and you might get it for a split second. They're so afraid of having the connection that they'll steal it away. They're so afraid of losing it that they sabotage it. It's the self-fulfilling prophecy. Um, you know, they're so worried that they walk into the hole. You know, five people can be walking along the street. I'm so afraid I'm going to, you know, fall into the hole, even though there's a perfect way around. Here they go, falling into the hole. They're so focused on it that they have a self-fulfilling prophecy. So you, it's a testimony to what you, where, where attention goes, energy flows sort of situation. So really, you know, learn to understand that this is who they are. This is their conglomerate. This is what is their composite. This is their makeup. This is, you know, this is... The co this is the, the combination, this is the formula, this is their recipe, this is all their ingredients, you know. And so to see that that is who they are and then learn, becoming more learned and wise yourself and really a study of human behavior is how to, um, you know, not just get a, a tolerance um, because a lot of people feel like um, they can't tolerate others. Um, and or that you are intolerable you know there's these really sort of horrific feelings which are very devastating very hurtful very distressing and feel like rip at the core of your being so you have to maintain a core and allow them their core their core um is you know one where you really need to get you know a sense of validating their feelings even if it's just a couple you know statements um, you know, validating their side, even though if you don't feel that way at all, I don't, you know, you might not support it, get it. I would never say this. Um, but kind of being on their side as the only side <clears throat> is really kind of a way that you can experiment and try for yourself as a way to better navigate, um, connection or, um, relationships with these types of individuals and to know and to forecast it is going to feel different it is you know for normalcy's sake it might it's not going to feel normal it's going to feel it's going to feel cold it's going to feel too hot you know the chair is not right it's going to feel uncomfortable um this is a testimony that oftentimes it's a difficult to fit, have a good fit with these individuals meaning a good you know, sense of symbi symbiosis or getting along or harmony. Um, and so a lot of people think that if they confront the negative of the borderline, that this will help dispel it when that is really not the case because they have a tendency to focus on the negative. Worry warts, um, um, catastrophizing, you know, just going off the deep end um, in hysterics. Um, and they're on their own track. You know, they, this is just who they are. You can't pull, you, you can't put them together like a million cracked eggshells, you know, and try to put them together. You might feel that you're walking on eggshells. This is a common experience. This is what it is. This is who, you know, this is, you know, like we were saying in a previous video, are they a rose? Are they a thorn? Are they, um, a hibiscus? you know, tree, you know, they are what they are. You're not going to have the same experience from a rose as with a cactus. You're going to have a different feeling, a different scent, a different admiration, understanding why they are the way that they are. Why does a, a, a cactus have thorns so animals can't eat it? 
Why do they have that thick, resilient skin? Because they're retaining water. You know, um, you know, they don't grow very much. A rose bush might grow and then regrow. A cactus bush might, you know, sprout out a little bit here, but that's where they're going to go. You can't live their life for them. You can't put their life together for them. You can't do certain things for these people and understand that this will oftentimes generate a feeling of helplessness, a feeling of um, sadness, a feeling that you don't understand how much I love and care about you and that there's nothing to be ashamed about. I feel these people have oftentimes a core of shame um, based on neglect or abuse in their past. Something happened perhaps in their childhood where they were violated, they were neglected, physically hurt, separated from their family members, separated from their house early. They Maybe they moved a lot. Um, they, you know, and so they got onto a whole different track in life, even though they could be your sibling, they can be your, your wife, you know, they can be your mother, they can be your work partner. Um, they're just, you know, they have a feeling that they have to, uh, you know, do this. They have sort of a compulsion. Their, 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 their situation, how they view things is going to remain stable, stably unstable. Um, the instability is going to be a stability. Um, and so that might be unfortunate. There's always going to be rocky roads, but where do you plant your foot? There's always going to be precipices, really, you know, tall mountains, but where do you lay your hands? Where do you get a grip? Where do you hold on? You know, where do you plant your hand? You know, can you be gentle? Can you kind of give them blessings? Can you you know, be a little bit hands off with them. Can you, you know, realize that, you know, but oftentimes enabling them makes things worse. They can become very dependent, um, you know, because of this. And it can be very disabling. Um, it can be a very disabling condition. And for a lot of people, they do actually need to be on um, medication, um, uh, therapy, um, state support or, you know, government support, um, because it's very difficult oftentimes for them to have like a stable routine, keeping a job, getting frustrated, walking out of the job in the middle of the shift, walking out of the dinner in the middle of the dinner, walking out of the date in the middle of the date, you know, leaving the house in the middle of the night, they're just gonna be like jet propulsion and they're, they're gone, you know, they're on their own tirade. And, it's very difficult to feel that you let them go because you feel that they can be a hazard to themselves and a hazard to others. So, you know, they do need support. They need professional support, but it's very difficult if they don't feel that they want any help. Um, a borderline who knows that they're borderline um, and is at that emotional intelligent level will say, you know, I know how to deal with it. You know, this is the borderline aspect of me or someone who has obsessive compulsive disorder they'll be able to manage it. Um, I don't have to count my steps. I don't have to wash my hands. That's just my OCD. I know not to pay attention to that. They can distract themselves. They have that ability to get leverage over themselves. Some people with bipolar disorder, they cannot help themselves. Repeatedly bad relationships. Um, cutting themselves. Cutting, cutting, cutting their arms, legs, you know, hundreds of times self-mutilation, um, giving them some sort of relief, some sort of certainty. If I cut, it's going to be hurt and it's going to bleed. Okay, good. Then I go like this. They're trying to get some sense of, you know, uh, of some certainty. And then they get that, that, you know, neurochemical high from the pain, the endorphins, and then, you know, patting it down. It's very, very sad. Very, very, very sad but they can also be the sweetest and gentlest people, um, caring there for you, you know, and a lot of people want, you know, to pull out the best of them. Um, of course, naturally to have a heart. So realize that there are some things that you can do, but namely to connect, it's to look at, to make sure that, um, you're not ena enabling and, you know, to stop the bleeding basically is to let them know, you know, that, certain things can't be tolerated. They do need support and help and, you know, plug in here, plug in there. You know, if it's, if it's someone who 
if it's a child and they're in school and their parent is this way, you know, you can go to a counselor and say, I'm having trouble at home. You know, there's, and then they'll then reinforce it. And then, you know, the school will be calling the parent. You know, if you can get other parties involved, um, your religious center involved, you know, for their assistance, doctor appointments, evaluations, medication, support groups, um, other hobbies that they can distract them and get involved in and get immersed in that can help them deter that sense and avoidance of that fear, that emptiness, <clears throat> that disconnect that they feel. They feel such a, a fear of disconnect that they're always trying to connect, but oftentimes in the wrong way and missing the boat entirely on certain things. <clears throat> so, um, if there's, I, if there's any tools that I can recommend, I mean, that would just be a couple. And if you guys have more questions, please do leave comments or questions down below. I'd be happy to assist. It's your buddy, peace and harmony with you here today. And I hope that these videos do help. Please share and please subscribe for more great tools, videos, discussion, and support. You can be the anchor, be the anchor for yourself, and be able to reflect this energy to others. That's really an important thing so that you can become, you know, more aware and validate yourself while you're in the midst. And you'll see that oftentimes it might be unpleasant and it's going to feel different, but try to release some of the judgment that comes with oftentimes interacting or feeling of unfairness or being invisible which oftentimes feels like a critical or um, personal assault.